Hi guys, today I'm going to read an excerpt from the, a play called Arcadia by Tom Stoppard. Now, if you know the name Tom Stoppard, you may know him as the guy who uh, wrote Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, as well as a couple of other plays. But um, this is, well, one of my favorites. Uh, my fiance is actually the one who introduced me to it. Uh, and basically, it takes place half in the early 1800s and half in the present day. And it's about love, math, sex, and chaos, more or less. Um, to the extent where, like, well, I'd say if you like the webcomic XKCD, then you will probably enjoy this play. And a lot of Tom Stoppard's plays do a very similar thing where they take um, ideas, like, you know, math and science and physics and stuff like that, and he writes plays that involve such ideas as well as relationships and love and people and stuff like that. So, combines science and, you know, in this case there's a little bit of history, because 1800s, and um, sort of human nature is what it looks at a lot. And a lot of wit, too, like, if, if you're a fan of, um, old-fashioned wit, I think, like, uh, Serrano de Bergerac, you'll also quite like this, so. And I'm going to enact this with dinosaurs, because since it's a play, it would feel strange to be just reading it. Um, now, because I only have two hands, and two dinosaurs and a book to flip through. We will, uh, well, we'll see how this works. Okay. So. Characters, um, there are lots of characters, but we will be introduced to two of them. Um, all right. Act 1, Scene 1. A room on the garden front of a very large country house in Derbyshire, in April 1809. Nowadays, the house would be called a stately home. The upstage wall is mainly tall, shaped, uncurtained, shapely uncurtained windows, one or more of which work as doors. Nothing much need be said or seen of the exterior beyond. We come to learn that the house stands in the typical English park of the time. Perhaps we see an indication of this, perhaps only light and air and sky. The room looks bare, despite the large table with, which occupies the center of it. The table, the straight-backed chairs, and the only other item of furniture, the architect's stand or reading stand, would all be collectible pieces now, but here, on an uncarpeted wood floor, they have no more pretension than a schoolroom, which is indeed the main use of this room at the time. What elegance there is, is architectural, and nothing is impressive but the scale. There is a door in each of the side walls. These are closed, but one of the French windows is open to a bright but sunless morning. There are two people, each busy with books and paper and pen and ink, separately occupied. The pupil is Thomasina Coverley, age 13. Here, played by our uh, Triceratops. The tutor is Septimus Hodge, age 22. Here, played by a T-Rex. Each has an open book. Hers is a slim mathematics primer. His is a handsome, thick quarto, 
brand new Affinity production with little tapes to tie when the book is closed. His loose papers, etc. are kept in a stiff-backed portfolio, which also ties up with tapes. Septimus has a tortoise which is sleepy enough to serve as a paperweight. Elsewhere on the table, there is an old-fashioned theodolite and also some old books stacked up. Septimus, what is carnal embrace? Carnal embrace is the practice of throwing one's arms around a side of beef. Is that all? No, a shoulder of mutton, a haunch of venison well hugged, an embrace of grouse, caro, carnis, feminine, flesh. Is it a sin? Not necessarily, my lady, but when carnal embrace is sinful, it is a sin of the flesh, QED. We had Caro in our Gaelic wars. The Britons live on milk and meat. Lactet et carne vivunt. I am sorry that the seed fell on the stony ground. That was the sin of, sin of Onan, wasn't it, Septimus? Yes, he was giving his brother's wife a Latin lesson, and she was hardly the wiser after it than before. I thought you were finding a proof for Fermat's last theorem. It is very difficult, Septimus. You will have to show me how. If I knew how, there would be no need to ask you. Fermat's last theorem has kept people busy for a hundred and fifty years, and I hoped it would keep you busy long enough for me to read Mr. Chater's poem in praise of love with only the distraction of its own absurdities. Our Mr. Chater has written a poem. He believes he has written a poem, yes. I can see that there might be more carnality in your algebra than in Mr. Chater's Couch of Eros. Oh, it was not my algebra. I heard Jellyby telling Cook that Mrs. Chater was discovered in carnal embrace in the gazebo. Pause. Really? With whom did Jellyby happen to say? Thomasina considers this with a puzzled frown. What do you mean, with whom? With what, exactly so? The idea is absurd. Where did this story come from? Mr. Noakes. Mr. Noakes. Papa's landscape gardener. He was taking bearings in the garden when he saw, through his spyglass, Mrs. Chater in the gazebo in carnal embrace. And do you mean to tell me that Mr. Noakes told the butler? No. Mr. Noakes told Mr. Chater. Jellyby was told by the groom, who overheard Mr. Noakes telling Mr. Chater in the stable yard. Mr. Chater being engaged in the closing stable door. What do you mean, Septimus? So thus far, the only people who know about this are Mr. Noakes, the landscape architect, the groom, the butler, the cook, and, of course, Mrs. Chater's husband, the poet. And Arthur, who was cleaning the silver, and the boot boy. And now you. Of course. What else did he say? Mr. Noakes? No, not Mr. Noakes. Jellyby. You heard Jellyby telling the cook. Cook hushed him almost as soon as he started. Jellyby did not see that I was being allowed to finish yesterday's upstairs rabbit pie before I came to my lesson. I think you would, I think you have not been candid with me, Septimus. A gazebo is not, after all, a meat larder. I never said my definition was complete. 
Is carnal embrace kissing? Yes. And throwing one's arms around Mrs. Shader? Yes. Now, Fermat's last theorem. I thought as much. I hope you are ashamed. I, my lady? If you do not teach me the true meaning of things, who will? Ah, yes, I am ashamed. Carnal embraces sexual congress, which is the insertion of the male genital organ into the female genital organ for purposes of procreation and pleasure. Fermat's last theorem, by contrast, asserts that when x, y, and z are whole numbers, each raised to the power of n, the sum of the first two can never equal the third when n is greater than two. Pause. <sighs> Nevertheless, that is the theorem. It is disgusting and incomprehensible. Now when I am grown to practice it myself, I shall never do so without thinking of you. Thank you very much, my lady. Was Mrs. Shader down this morning? No. Tell me more about sexual congress. There's nothing to be said about sexual congress. Is it the same as love? Oh no, it is much nicer than that. All right, it's not the end of the scene, but I'm going to end there for purposes of not, not having it get more complicated by adding more characters. But that is the beginning of Arcadia. Um, if, like I said, if this <laughs> seems interesting to you, math, sex, love, chaos, all that good stuff, um, definitely pick up a copy of it, um, wherever you pick up copies of things these days. <laughs> I feel like I always used to be at a local bookstore, but now half the time there's e-readers and there's Amazon, so however you would like to read it, you should do so. And let me know if you, if any of you are interested in plays in general, um, and if, I want to see if there are better ways for me to, uh, act out bits. I think this having to switch hands setup is not optimal, but there are probably better ways of doing this that I just hadn't thought of yet, or don't have this stuff for yet. So if there are plays that you particularly like, or uh, I think with two characters it's easier, two character scenes from a book that would be particularly interesting to act out, gets a little bit hard with novels because there ends up being a lot of like introspection if it's first person, for example. But yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys next time.